Hey everyone, it's Jonathan from Motor Psychology. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and checking out what I'm doing. It's greatly appreciated. So it's December 10th, 2022. It's pretty cold where I am right now, below freezing. I think it was about minus 11 Celsius this morning one of the colder days so far this winter. Anyway, in today's video, I'm going to be taking off the timing chain and timing gears. And I'm also gonna be putting on a new set of gears and a new timing chain as well. Also, time permitting, I may take off the steering pump or leave that to another video. I'll have to see. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that this goes smoothly and nothing drastic happens and we're going to show you a good way of doing it so that it's pretty problem free and I can guarantee you that the existing timing chain and gears have not been off this Corvette since it came from the factory in 1977 so the parts that I got I got from Napa and I'm going to try them out see how they work so stick around and let's get into this video <music> So this is from the previous video and what you see here is me opening the timing cover on the 350 5.7 liter V8 Chevy small block engine and this is the opening of it for the very first time as far as I know in the history of it. So I'm opening it up and then we're going to get into changing out the gears. There is the timing gears on the 350 and I'm going to be taking them off. It's pretty cold out today so it's going to help me in my job here. So I just wanted to point out that with this at the moment it's at top dead center which is on the compression stroke, not the exhaust stroke. The important part to note for sure is this zero or center mark on the crankshaft sprocket. So no matter what, that'll be facing up. This main point is up here. And there's also a little key here, which means that I can really only put it in one way. So you can turn it now if you want, but once this chain comes off, you don't want to turn it anymore. And my plan is not to turn it anymore. So the one that I put on is going to have the same as this. And then it's also going to have the point at the top, which you normally would find at top dead center compression, top dead center exhaust. This would swing down and line up with those two. So I also wanted to point out that this is in desperate need of changing after further review it is way too slack for it to remain functional and considering i have all this other stuff out then it only makes sense i don't even have the oil pan in so it's a very easy relatively easy change for something that is that significant so i'm going to get organized and get ready to get this changed there is a methodology where you can heat this up a little bit and that will expand the metal and allow it to slide off I may do that I'll try and pull it without but certainly when I put on the new one I'm gonna warm it up a little bit and it'll slide on very nicely on this which is quite cold right now so that works to my advantage here is the new timing chain part it's a Napa product and it's for the 350 engine. Let's have a look at it. So inside you get your timing chain right here. You get your lower sprocket that goes on the crankshaft. Looks more or less like the original one. Even has the dot alignment on there. 
looks pretty good. And you've got the cam shaft sprocket there. I'm going to try and get the old ones off and get these ones on. So let's go give that a try. This stuff looks pretty good, pretty decent quality. And let's go and try that out. So let's have a look down here again. We've got that on the center. And this guy is awfully loose. So what I'm going to do to start it off is to take this off. And we got to keep in mind that the other one is going to be straight in on that. So let's try and get these guys off and then this thing will slide right off, chain included. Yeah, it's too loose. This side is usually typically tighter. This side is way too loose. Time to change it. So these are one half inch in size. I'll see if I can loosen those. Generally speaking, these are not torqued too high, but they may have Loctite in, so I'm not too sure if I can crack them open or not, but let's see. Very easy. Extremely easy on that one. Too easy as well. And that one. So three off, really, really easy. Pretty oily here. And three bolts out. This will come off really easy. I'll just be back in a sec to remove it. Next step, I'm going to slide this off carefully. It's going to just remove really, really easy. And then we're just going to be stuck with getting this off. So let's do that. First time off, as far as I know, in the history of this engine. There we go. There's your timing chain and your timing chain sprocket is off. Now let's get set for the new one. So that's what it looks like there. I'll show you guys another picture of it right now. Another shot. All right, there's the type of gear puller that will work to pull this gear off. Before I tighten it, I'm going to just gently heat up that gear and it should make it expand slightly and then I'll be able to pull it off no problem. So sometimes it's good to have a blowtorch around or some sort of external heating. Let's give that a try see if we can heat that up a little bit. A little bit of heat on that, as much as possible. So I'm trying to heat around it as much as I can reach from where I am. If you had an infrared thermometer, you could check and get it up to about 150 Fahrenheit or so. That should be good. I'm going to give it a try with this. If that's not good enough, I'll reheat. So to get this started, I'm using a breaker bar and that just helps me get the leverage and also in this case, the reach to get into that space. So on these C3 Corvettes, it's a long reach from the front of the car into the engine bay like this and also it's a pretty significant reach from the side as well due to the super large fenders anyway i'm using the breaker bar to give me the leverage and as soon as i see that bottom gear move forward slightly i'm going to switch it over to the impact wrench and that will make it getting off a lot more easier so 
Let's see how I do when I switch on to the impact wrench in just a sec. There we go. You can see the gear is coming out nice and easy now. Watch. There we go. Let's pull this gear right off now. Perfect. There's your timing gear from the crankshaft off. A little bit of heat helps it come off really nicely. So we're going to get ready to put the new one on in a minute. There's the new camshaft timing gear. I'm going to set that on right now, see how it fits. So the mark is on the top. This will fit on here. That's a good indicator which will go through there and help align it up. So I just have to line that up myself. There we go. And then put the screws in and that will be that gear in. There's the two gears, the old one and the new one. And you want to make sure that you put them on the right way around so you have to be careful to look for the zero marking which is this one and the space for the woodruff key is right here anyway um, same with this one exact same position there's the zero on top and the same spot so you can even double check by lining them up and they line up perfectly so i'm going to see if i can slip this one on right now I may be lucky and it'll slip right on, but it may not be. No. Oh. Probably heat it up just a little bit and it'll slip on pretty nicely. Take this off for now. There's the temperature of my garage right now, which will work out fine. And that's with the heat on as well. So there is the gear in there, just getting warmed up in this small toaster oven. Well, I'm just waiting for the crankshaft gear to heat up and then I'm going to slide it on there. So hopefully things will go well. I think they should. Uh, should be an easy slide on there and then I'm going to lightly tap it in place if it doesn't slip right on. So I've got about another five minutes to wait and then I'm going to stick that on. So I'll get my camera set up for that shot and let's do it. It's working at getting some of the gasket off while I can reach down here. For this job I'm using a straight edge razor that's in a specialized plastic cover so it helps you get the right angle and it also is good for safety as well. So I'm using that to get most of the gasket off. Uh, I do have a professional gasket scraper as well and I'm going to do a final go around on this surface prior to putting the timing chain cover on. For now I'm just using this razor blade and it's giving me a good start that's for sure. Just doing a final clean on this area where the crankshaft timing gear is going to go back on and then I'm going to stick the gear on. Let's do this. The part is here. It's nice and hot. Make sure we get the right side identified here. Yeah. And there we go. It's really warm. I probably would have been better off using oven mitts or something like that on this part. It's a good idea to tap this in lightly to try and make sure that it evenly goes on as far as possible. And that's what I'm doing here. Tap it in. Seems to be going in pretty well. Just 
gonna check underneath the engine to see if that's lightening up okay. By doing this tapping, I'm trying to find an area where it tends to get seated. So that's what I'm looking for. Tap it enough and then you'll know when it's seated as far as you can get it in there with hammering lightly. That's the gear on. And now I'm just going to rotate it back to top dead center on the bottom. It's not uncommon for the timing gear on the crankshaft to get off center a little bit. So I'm just going to rotate it back to center. So on this one, I'm using the old gear and I'm putting it on the Woodruff key. And that way I'm going to be able to grab my pipe wrench and then use that gear and the pipe wrench to turn the crankshaft back to where it was before I started. So I'm looking at just rotating it a little to the left to get it lined up properly. You just want to make tiny small increments in your movement and just nudge it back into center. So you're better off to do tiny movements opposed to one large movement to get it back in position. So there we have it so far. You can see that I've been able to back off the crankshaft thing. So I've got that indicator straight up now. So we'll be good to put on the camshaft gear in a moment. So that one's all set up and we're good to go. So let's get the other one going and try that out. So this is the new timing chain. I'll pull that out. It's got 46 links and those are the individual links. And that's something that you wanna look for if you've got a 350 small block, 46 of these little tabs. Chain in, like so. Then you fit this guy in, look for my dot. It's gotta go straight up. Not very difficult to organize here. And obviously that isn't there, so you just kind of loosen it, rotate it into position. What I'm doing here is ensuring that both of the gears are going to line up at the same time while the chain fits into all the teeth on the sprocket so it's a little bit of a, an adjustment but it takes about as long as what you see here to get it organized and then you're good to go and start tightening it up so you can see on this one now that i've got the dot on the top here and also the dot underneath and the chain is on and I just need to tighten those little bolts in there. Those bolts, by the way, are torqued at 20 to 21 foot pounds. So not that hard really. So I'm gonna put that on and get that out of the way. So here's one of the bolts that I'm gonna put on there and I'm gonna use blue Loctite, this stuff here. And the reason I'm using blue is I want it to stay in there, but at the same time, I don't want it to be locked in there forever. So at least blue allows you to undo them. The red is a little bit too strong. So I'm gonna do that right now. Get those things torqued up to 21 foot pounds.
Allah tayramız belki yeri. Time to torque it. As soon as it clicks, it's tight enough. There we go. Click is twenty one. Twenty one. So it's math, that's it. Kind of my last step here is to just heat this up a little bit. I'm gonna make sure I get one final last tap in there. I also do not want or try not to heat up this crankshaft here at all. I just want to heat up this guy here a little bit. Just get it nice and warm so it'll let it expand and then I'm going to tap it in. Luckily metal expands when it gets warm and it's super cold where I am right now so it's not a big deal to heat this up slightly. It's going to expand and give me a little bit of wiggle room so I can tap this gear on more effectively and just make sure that it is seated properly and that's my main concern to get it all the way back seated properly nice and flush so that I'm good to go. All right let's try that out now. It's always such a long reach down here. All right final tap in. You could probably see it actually move in, probably just about a sixteenth of an inch or something like that. So I'm using the same thing that I made for pressing the bearings in and it's totally useful for this job. So once again, I'm just tapping it in, making sure that it is properly seated as far as it's going to go. This is not a job that I want to redo when everything is put back together. So. Better safe than sorry, and that's a great way of making sure that it's tapped all the way to the top. So I just wanted to show, did a final tap in on that. That's in nice and tight. It's seated all the way back there. And just as a comparison, you can see how tight this chain is compared to the old one. So it's super solid. Looks good. I'm happy with it. And that will complete this part of the timing gear. So there it is, new timing chain, installed, and everything is good to go. It's torqued up to 20 foot-pounds, so it should be good in that regard. Hey everyone, that completes the work on the timing chain and gears on this C3 Corvette, but most importantly, the 350 engine, small block, 5.7 liter, 350 cubic inch displacement V8 engine that is in this 
old beast here. So the timing gears have been replaced and the chain and next we'll be moving on to taking out the steering pump and a few other things, probably including some brake lines and moving forward with that. So hopefully you learned something. It's relatively straightforward. You just need some of the specialized tools and a little bit of tricks and techniques to get it done. So thanks a lot for sticking around and watching this to the end. We'll catch you all again in the next one, which is coming very, very soon.